Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us here again on Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's on a lovely Friday afternoon here in Honolulu, and I'm Ethan Allen, your host. With me today in the Think Tech Studios is Dan Nash. Dan Nash is a co-founder of a very interesting group called Comprendio. Uh, and he's a, a former high school math teacher, a published STEM researcher, a TEDx speaker, a uh, man of many talents, obviously. <laughs> uh, he's on Tech Accelerator program, so he's, he's done a lot of things, learned a lot of stuff, and, and his latest venture we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about is, is this Comprendio, which is sort of what, it's cutting edge ed tech, right? Uh, yeah, it's and a, more. <laughs> it's, uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me here today, oh. and um, I, I do appreciate the, um, you know, the man of many talents comment. But I would say that I, I still have a lot of things to learn, and you know, being able to speak with individuals like yourself who are in the science field, um, you know, it's always great just being able to have a conversation like this. So, so thanks again for having me on here. As long as we're all learning, that's yeah, the big thing, right. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, so I know there's a lot of different things we can talk about. Um, you know, what, where are you kind of thinking that we want to start this off? Well, uh, may maybe give us a little quick sense of the origin of, of how Comprendio came out. Because you and your co-founder, uh, Sean, were both sort of math teachers, mm -hmm. right? And just sort of cranking away and, and sort of realizing that something wasn't quite right about your math teaching, right? Yeah. No, so uh, our, our backstory, my co-founder and I, Sean Ho'okano Brio, we were both high school math teachers here, and uh, while we were teaching, um, you know, math is definitely not everybody's favorite <laughs> subject, especially in high school. Uh, a lot of the challenges we'd run into is we had students, you know, who were at grade level or, you know, years below grade level, and, you know, traditional instruction methods just weren't really working. We couldn't meet those students where they were right. in classes of 25 to 30. So. Um, we kind of threw this challenge out there to ourselves back in 2010, 2011, and we wondered, would it be possible to teach our students how to teach themselves? So, you know, using math as the practice vehicle, but we're focusing on teaching them the learning process. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we started playing around with some ideas back in 2010, uh, trying out some strategies in the test prep program, and had a little bit of success with it. So we took a summer in 2011 and put together some curriculum to, to try out where you know, we'd get away from the front of the classroom mm -hmm. and be more of a facilitator coach for our students. And, um, you know, we tried a lot of things that didn't work, <laughs> sure. but we had a little bit of success with it. We were able to move um, Sean's repeating algebra passing rate, um, which historically was 12%. So these are 16, 17 year old students. They're on their way out of high school. Mm -hmm. Math isn't really their thing. Um, he moved his passing rate from 12% up to 71%. Um, and I was able to take my freshman algebra passing rate from a historical about 55% pass rate up to 87. Um, so, you know, these are just, you know, our classroom experiences. Yeah, but that's impressive. We were, yeah. <laughs> we were fortunate enough that the Hawaii State Teachers Association asked us to build some professional development around mm -hmm. this concept for other teachers. Mm -hmm. um, so from 2012 to 2015, we were working with a little over 500 teachers and helping them build out some of these tools and, you know, getting a lot of feedback on what worked for them, what didn't work for them. Mm -hmm. um, so we had the joy of working with a lot of, like, K through 12, math, science, English, social studies, mm -hmm. foreign language teachers, and that helped us make the process even better. Mm -hmm. um, and through that, that's kind of where the idea of building software came was, you know, if we could automate some of these pieces that were a little more challenging or difficult to adopt for a teacher, right. um, you know, we could really scale this out to increase the impact that it could have. So, um, you know, it's a lot of different facets to the, the concept. Um, and one of our biggest challenges, I think, over the past few years is explain exactly what it is. <laughs> right, but it, it seems it's got two, as at least in my very brief acquaintance with it, I, I really only ran into this maybe a week or so ago, but it seems it, it has sort of elements of concept mapping and metacognition, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so getting the concepts and also thinking about what, what you think about those concepts and how, how the one concept is related to the other concept. And why. Yeah, there's a lot of that in there. Actually, I brought some slides with me to kind of give a, um, an cool. example of what this looks like and you know kind of how it launched a bit of the building of the software okay. so um yeah um if we could go i think yeah this is the, the second slide um okay. so let's say um actually can we go back one slide just to make sure oh, okay cool so um let's say for example before we we jump into the the slide that you saw with the kava'a and other examples um, you know, you want to just learn about something. So mm -hmm. in this case, if we, 
you know, go on to the Kavala slide. Um, you know, a teacher might give you a subject, like, okay. you know, hey, I want all 30 of my students to go out, do some independent research, write a two-page paper, come back. Right. Um, you know, if I were to ask you to go do a research paper, what, what would be the first thing you would do if you want to go learn about the Hokulea or what a Kavala is? I'd, I'd probably go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia, <laughs> you Google it, you know, right. 20, 30 years ago you might right. go to a library or just right. find somebody to talk story with them. Exactly. Um, so the whole point of this first part of the example is, you know, formal education, uh, you know, the brick and mortar classrooms and typically what the sitting in your seat listening to somebody looks like, um, unfortunately it doesn't really um, mirror or embody the natural learning process. Right. Exactly. So. Um, you know, kind of what you said, most people would go out and do some research. So if we go to the next slide, um, kind of see here, uh, I don't have all my fancy animations here, but this, uh, this works. So as we talked about before, you're going to do a little bit of research, maybe Google, talk story, mm -hmm. go to the library. And the whole thing you're doing here is you're just making observations. You're okay. looking at something, you're thinking about it, um, reflecting on it, and then, you know, you're kind of going down that path. If you think about anything you learn, whether it's math in a classroom, how to ride a bike, um, how to cook, the whole time all that you're doing is research. You're putting yourself in front of something to observe. You're making observations, and then you're using that as a foundation to make more and more and kind of adjust them. Right. L linking content to pre-existing knowledge yeah, exactly. in a systematic way. And so the reason that we frame it this way when we work with teachers is to get people to step away from all of the jargon, all of the, I mean, there's lots of great research out there that goes into like what the learning process is. Mm -hmm. But if you just really simplify it, mm -hmm. you're putting yourself in front of things to observe and you're making observations. Mm -hmm. Now the challenge with that is, you know, everybody kind of has their own internal systems that help them navigate that process. Mm -hmm. And what we found was our high performing students had high literacy, mm -hmm. they had very extensive vocabularies, and more importantly, um, when we asked them to draw their own concept map, mm -hmm. their concept maps were actually very similar to ours. Mm -hmm. Our lower performing students down the sliding scale of the spectrum, less and less connections down to almost nothing at all. Right. So um, the last little bit of that example, um, we'll kind of go through the, these slides rather quickly. Um, so as you're going through and learning about this, um, you're making those observations. And then another example we like to give if you want to move on to the next slide. Um, so you know, if the whole point of learning is you're putting yourself in front of things to make observations about, and we want to help our students learn how to teach themselves, our thing was we have to give them feedback on their thinking. Not on if you get the problem right or wrong, or not if you're copying notes down. So where do we see their thinking? In their notes. Right. The challenge is as a high school teacher, when you have 200 students right. and they're taking notes every day, you can see from the examples right. up here, how am I supposed to decipher those notes, right. understand them and give feedback, and then you know, still do other things with my day? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So this is kind of the challenge we run into. So we looked into some other solutions. If you go to the next slide, um, on the left-hand side, there's Cornell Notes. Those have been around since like the 60s or 70s, I believe. Right. Um, those are a step in the right direction. Lots of programs use those. Um, sort of a systematization of the... Of yeah, the so it's a lot process. easier for the teacher. Right. Um, the problem is, is a lot of it's still copying notes down. Right. With the technology we have today, copying anything down is a waste of time yeah. unless it's rote memorization. Right. Um, so, you know, there's definitely some benefits. The students can write questions on the side, a summary on the bottom, but you can't really dig into too much of, like, what are you thinking about this? Mm -hmm. And then there's some more, you know, kind of fun ones like nifty notes on the side, but neither of these were really cutting it for us. Mm -hmm. So we wondered, um, you know, how, what, what else is out there that we can use to help mm -hmm. us organize student thinking? Mm -hmm. That's where the concept map came in. Okay. So what if we use a concept map for taking notes? Um, <laughs> so this example you can see up here, um, there's 10 steps on how to ride a bicycle from mm -hmm. Wikipedia. Okay. Um, you know, and a lot of things that I'm sure you've seen in your science education mm -hmm. background is there's a lot of processes that they teach to people and typically they remember them, right. but then the challenge is, is if there's an assessment question or a real world application, it's not gonna be that nice process that you get to follow. Right. You're gonna have to understand the concepts to you know, modify right. them. So if I were to ask you, I know it's kind of faint, sorry, um, but what are some of the key words that stick out in those, those instructions to you? There's no right or wrong. We, we do this exercise with everybody. Well, uh, I can hardly read them here, but, but, but uh, yeah, uh, 
Let's see. Bicycle brakes. Bicycle brakes. Uh, pedals, I think. Uh, nice, yeah. yeah. So there's definitely some key language. So if I were to ask a few other imaginary people at this table, do you think they would pick out the same words? No. No, of course right, not. Right. And that's one of the challenges of teaching is if I'm giving you this knowledge and I don't know what you're pulling out of it, right. how am I supposed to give you feedback on it? So the the next part, obviously, is you give people key vocabulary. Right. Those are those anchor points in the brain that you're right. attaching meaning experiences right. to. Um, but then taking it a step further, what we found is um, there's lots of cognitive science research from the 70s and 80s uh, mm -hmm. that kind of shares, if you give somebody a graphic organizer, mm -hmm. so instead of just a list of words, right. but you show them a concept map, for example, right. this is how I see them relating, mm -hmm. you greatly reduce the cognitive load that's on that learner while they're you know, looking at a concept, thinking about where it fits into the big picture. Right. Um, so this is kind of the, the reason why we think that a concept map in conjunction with the actual processes mm -hmm. really helps accelerate that knowledge acquisition. Um, so just to quickly run through this last part, remember the Kava'a words that were up there? No, I don't remember them. Yeah, <laughs> I want all 30 on the list now. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, you know, as a first time learner, instead of having to just Google all those words, mm -hmm. figure out what they mean, um, this was shared with us with, by one of our mentors. Mm -hmm. um, really amazing individuals who's helped us a lot since we started this. Um, and he, you know, is a uh, very knowledgeable person in this field. Mm -hmm. If you look at the word sale mm -hmm. and look at the word fish trap, if they're just in a list, you wouldn't really have too much of a sense of how they relate. But if you look at them through here, you can see that sale relates to the sheet, which is part of the hollow mat, which uses the same weaving as the fish trap. Mm -hmm. You've done no research, and yet you already have a lot more context to start, mm -hmm. you know, really digesting these things. Right. So. You know, this is kind of the little presentation that we give for the, the reason for why concept maps are such a powerful thing for teaching. Right. Um, and then the last thing here are just some examples of what that looked like in our class. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have computers in our classroom. Mm -hmm. We would just build our own maps, get to the photocopier mm -hmm. at 5.30, 6 in the morning, and these were the students' note-taking devices. So mm -hmm. if you go to the last slide, you can actually see some examples from some teachers we worked with. Mm -hmm. So that's ninth grade algebra on the left. Um, on the right, I think that's second or third grade. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the teachers provide a little more structure with the sticky notes and the cutouts. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's the major shift that we did was, don't copy notes off the board. I'm going to give you a structure. You just put your thinking down. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to walk around and give you feedback on that thinking, mm -hmm. as opposed to saying this is right or wrong. I'd mm -hmm. say that eh, you're maybe kind of missing something there. Right. Go back to this video or this example right. and make another what, observation. What would happen if you put this over here? Yeah. You know? and so. Then we're giving them feedback on their thinking mm -hmm. as opposed to giving them feedback on their math competency. Right. And naturally, if you make somebody a more self-directed thinker, they're going to be able to tackle you know, any type of content. Right. right. You're, you're raising their awareness of their own thinking process. You're exactly. Making, making them more metacognitive then. And, and mm -hmm. then you will then tend to they learn about to turn inward and think about how they're thinking and what they're thinking and why exactly. this thinking worked here, but it didn't work here and why they then have to step to the side and take a different approach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know, minus a few like actual learning disabilities that some individuals unfortunately right. are born with, most people are capable of developing this internal skill set. The problem is the way our school system is set up generally, mm -hmm. it does not create a structure for somebody to practice these things, get feedback on these things. Mm -hmm. um, and so the whole software idea came from, um, we would train teachers with this, but as you could see, mm -hmm. Building those concept maps takes time. Right. Running around the classroom takes time. Right. And they would implement for the PD course, right. but then the challenge was because it was such a behavior change, right. they would go right back to it. So sure. we built the software to automate some of those. So <laughs> you mentioned time. We are, uh, we're at that time. We have to take a very short break, a okay. one minute break. Uh, you're here with us on Likeable Science. Dan Nash, the co-founder of Comprendio, is with me here, and we're having this fascinating conversation about his new educational technology to teach STEM. Uh, and we will uh, be back in a minute.
Hello, ha! How you doing there, lassies and laddies? This is Angus McTech here on Think Tech Hawaii, and I have my favorite show, Hibachi Talk, with my good old buddies Gordo the Texara and Andrew the Security Guy. Please join us every Monday. No, it's Friday. Every Friday from 1 p.m. to 1:30 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii, and you can also find us on YouTube, Hibachi Talk. Hello, ha! Thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii, Asia in Review. My name is Johnson Choi. My next show next month is on October 13, 11 a.m. See you then. Bye-bye. And we're back here on Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. With me today is Dan Nash, founder of, uh, co-founder of Comprendio. And we're having, having a, a great uh, conversation about how Prendio works and some of the sort of the breakthroughs that, that Dan and his uh, co-founder Sean had figured out and seen sort of the inefficiencies of some of the traditional teaching methods help kids become more self-directed learners, focusing more on sort of the processes of learning, helping the kids learn to think as well as think to learn, <laughs> uh, and rather than just just teaching them math, you know, and and this was a, a, a using. Uh, sort of a concept-based general idea and getting the kids to pay more attention to what they were doing. So uh, you, you had us up there where you were just starting to get the software going. Yeah, so um, as I was sharing before, we were working with teachers. I mean, we were very fortunate. People gave us an opportunity to put together some state-accredited PD courses mm -hmm. here and do some work in Singapore and China. Oh. And what we found was, um, you know, when teachers we're taking a course for credits, so they had to put together the curriculum, the portfolio, gather student evidence of implementation. They would see these impacts in the classroom, but the challenge was there's a lot of upfront work that goes into utilizing this method. There's a lot of behavior change um, if you're going to be walking around the classroom all day as opposed to being the sage on the stage. Right. Um, and those are really tough ask of somebody who already has very little time, which teachers do. So what we thought was back in 2014, what if we build web-based software, um, A, because a software company is more scalable mm -hmm. than a consulting company, but B, that it automates those pieces that cause behavior change for teachers. So, mm -hmm. you know, it could, you could quickly embed content into a map with questions as opposed to having to do printouts every mm -hmm. day in the morning. Um, you know, one of the biggest challenges was a teacher walking around giving feedback on student thinking day mm -hmm. in, day out gets a little exhausting. Sure. So what if we built text analysis into the platform so that you could use some basic AI and text analysis uh -huh. components to read the student's notes for you um, and report back to you. So, you know, kind of imagine you're teaching 30 students in the classroom and they all have this TA called Comprendio. Mm -hmm. And that teaching assistant is, you know, kind of guiding them, it's giving them feedback based on the notes they're typing, based on the responses they have, and then you know, all those TAs report back to you oh. um, in a nice little dashboard. Right. So, I mean, that's kind of the easiest way to describe it oh. is we're redefining student note-taking yeah. into a true two-way communication so that, Excellent. you know, a teacher doesn't have to wait weeks or a month to know which students get it, which and ones and don't. And more <laughs> important, the student doesn't have to wait yes. four months to get that feedback because they've forgotten long since whatever it was they did wrong or right. And exactly. Very <laughs> like, hey, I got the A or I, oh, I got the F, you know? Yeah, we um, liken it almost to, uh, you know, if you think about communication now, we all have well, cell my phone. cell phone's not in my pocket right now, but um, you know, if you think about that path from you know the written language to written letters, you know, then like the Pony Express and other mail system mm -hmm. shows up, and then eventually you get some Morse code, telecommunication lines mm -hmm. go down, and then eventually we move into satellites and cell phones. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I feel like the communication systems in education are still kind of back in the Pony Express days. Mm -hmm. Maybe landlines, right. when you look at some of the student reporting services like Edmodo, for mm -hmm. example, you know, teachers can comment on grades on assignments mm -hmm. or like overall behavior and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. But there's no real like instant communication about mm -hmm. you're getting this or you're missing this or mm -hmm. you need that help. Mm -hmm. um, which it's, not, it's not like text messaging, you know? Yeah, no. Know, you know? <laughs> There's some components of that in there, but we kind of see our, our platform helping bring this real instant two-way communication right. to the learning process. So the example I, I would use sort of as a biologist, a neuroscience guy, is 
it would make no sense. You know, your nervous system reacts fairly quickly. You, know, you lay your hand down on a hot stove and you yank it back pretty quick because mm -hmm. you feel you feel that pain. And if instead, you know, the <laughs> travel up like this, then your fingers would be smoking before we would get that message, right? And exactly. And your tissue would be ruined, and yeah, and instead you've got to have a, a fast thing to make learning effective there, you know? Yeah. And, and so yeah, the, the faster that feedback loop is, the, the better... The That's better a perfect the, example yeah. of it. I mean, I'm guessing, uh, you know, if you have had kids in school or you have friends that have kids in school, um, you know, one of the things that is challenging is if you were to call up your teacher right now and go, hey, what's my student getting? What are they not getting? Um, it's borderline impossible for a teacher to tell you that. And right. it's not their fault. They just don't have the tools and the resources and structure at their disposal right. to quickly go, oh, they need help on this concept, this concept. They're doing well here, here, and right, here. Right outside of, hey, they're turning in their homework and right. they're doing okay on tests. Yeah, they're reading well and not doing so good in math. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then what do you do with that? I mean, it's yeah. not very prescriptive. Right. So. No, this, this sounds, it's a little, it gives you almost a surgical precision strike into to the thought process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, no, fascinating, fascinating stuff. And so you, you've got this now uh, software up, running. I, I've seen you have a website there. Um, I actually went on, was trying to, to sign up. Yeah, we saw, you signed up for an account. Yeah, yeah thanks so, for checking it out. Right. Um, and, um, but so basically, are teachers more or less now, is this more or less sort of open to people, to any teachers to come on and just start playing with it and using it? Or do you want to so train them first or what? It's pretty open. What okay. we did last year initially, um, one of our big challenges was because we were first time entrepreneurs and I mean, my background is math and science research. Mm -hmm. I know a little bit about computer programming, but we didn't have any real, like, hardcore software development skills. Mm -hmm. So we were contracting out from 2014 to 2015 our development with some close mm -hmm. friends who run a web app development company here. And the first year was just like, how do we take this mm -hmm. and put it onto a computer? Because there's yeah. so many different facets sure, that right. were like, do we include that? Do we not? Mm -hmm. And we were, we were really fortunate that those professional development courses we were running, we were able to get feedback from teachers every single weekend on, mm -hmm. this part's good, this is a barrier, I don't like this, my students don't like this. Mm -hmm. So last year we had an open beta, you know, a few hundred teachers tried it, but the uses were all over the place. Sure. Like some once a week, some once a month, some very sporadically. Mm -hmm. So that helped us kind of pin down the, the main value proposition that teachers were centering around, which was this real-time communication feedback mm -hmm. um, and personalized feedback for the students. And then this year we've transitioned into doing more controlled pilots. Okay. So instead of just you know allowing teachers to use it how they want, um, we're getting groups of about five to ten teachers mm -hmm. and running them through about a six-week cycle okay. um, where they we help them build some initial um, you know starter kits they implement we talk with them and their students once a week mm -hmm. and then we take that feedback on what's working and what's not and we put so together a development scope for our software developers cool and then do a little bit of a B testing so we're kind of in the middle of that Excellent. teachers can go on and sign up um, so and these groups of teachers are, are then they sort of in their cohorts, or they, they all sort of talk to each other and, and learn together, or they just sort of happen to be six teachers who are randomly around who happen to just be giving you data more or less at the, at the same time. Definitely more of the latter. Um, we have teachers from you know the East Coast, mm -hmm. California, as well as here that are using it. Um, ones that do work together in a cohort, uh, we do kind of encourage that that conversation because it helps build yeah, I mean, that. I would think that social learning aspect yeah. could, be, could be a very powerful. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're working on trying yeah. to build a community around the product and not just like, oh, hey, I'm a teacher who right. uses this, but finding ways to connect teachers yeah. because then it's a lot more powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's a little bit of a mix and match. Some teachers are you know kind of flying solo at their school, mm -hmm. piloting it for us. Others have you know one or two other teachers they're working with. Um, right. So yeah, I mean, our main thing is we really just want to make sure that the tool is delivering the value that it needs in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, because the, the worst thing is if you go to sell to a school and you have this tool that's you know, supposed to be great for teachers, mm -hmm. a lot of ed tech that's built, unfortunately, was built by people who are never in the classroom. Right. They're looking at it from the learner perspective and not the teacher perspective. Right. And teachers have no time right. to implement new things unless you're going to take something off their plate. Right. Right. So that's what we're using these pilots this year is to really make sure we have a tool that's going to be, you know, a rock star in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, if we do go to sell to schools and districts in the future, there's not this typical process, which is happening in EdTech a lot, 
they get aggressive with sales, mm -hmm. and then two or three years later, the principal's like, wait, why am I paying all this money for something none of my teachers are using, right. and it's done. And in yeah. education, you get one red X, so yeah. Yeah. Um, we're just going slow to eventually go fast down the road. Yeah, interesting, interesting, because you could see this being used by a principal and their teachers as a learning tool to help the whole school learn, learn professional, whatever, yeah. whatever it is they need to learn, and then it really becomes embedded in the teacher's mind. So, hey, this is a tool I'm using to improve my own learning, so let's use it with the kids, too. And yeah, there's actually yeah, a principal yeah. that we're working with right now to help him uh, use the tool for alignment for his leadership teams at the mm -hmm. school. Um, as I was sharing with you before, we were fortunate that through a partnered consulting firm in the energy industry, we had a Fortune 500 company try mm -hmm. it out last year. That's right, yeah. um, so that's a great proof point. But um, a lot of feedback from our mentors is, you know, education is your sweet spot right now. Right. Have that as a beachhead. Right. Um, you know, and we're really trying to just do some of that exploratory work while refining the platform to find out what are those channels outside of the typical classroom that we're going to be able to help impact as well. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it seems like, again, you, you could apply this to the, the sort of the soft skills just as well, as mm -hmm. well as academic content. And that's, that's critical stuff for a kid's success. I mean... Kids can be doing as well in school as they want, but if they don't, if they don't know how to sort of work in a group and talk to each other and listen to one another and be exactly, you know, be, get along with their peers, they're not going to do very well in the workplace ultimately. Uh, yeah, you can have amazing ideas, yeah. but if you can't communicate them, yeah. what's the wow. point? <laughs> hey, well, th this this conversation clearly could go on and on and on for the next hour, an hour, <laughs> an hour, an hour, but we have only one minute left. So, okay, do you have any last parting thoughts you want to share with with our viewers? Um, I think the main thing that, you know, I, myself and my co-founder are really passionate about is, you know, there's a lot of challenges in education, especially with students who come from, you know, socioeconomic disadvantaged backgrounds. And, uh, you know, a lot of educational technology is looking to leave the teacher out of the picture, where what we see is when you ask somebody, what made the biggest difference in your education? They're going to tell you the name of a teacher, teacher yeah. not of a piece of software, mm -hmm. not of some amazing, like, you know, field trips are great, but it's a teacher. It's the person who makes the difference. Um, so we're just really passionate about making sure that we build tools that help turn every teacher a student has into that great teacher that we all kind of remember growing up. So Bingo. Wow. Um, that's kind of our mission, and, you know, we got a long ways to go, but... Hey. We feel positive we're uh, we're going to get there. You seem like you're on the right track. Uh, hey, that, that, that's fascinating. I look forward to many more conversations to hear about it. Thank you so much for coming on Likeable Science and, and sharing your, your Likeable Science learning here. Uh, thank you so much for the time. It was a great experience. Aloha. Thanks. And I hope you'll join us again next week. Uh, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science. Every Friday afternoon at 2.